Some people might think that raw honey and coffee sounds gross, but don't knock it till you try it. I much prefer it to refined sugar for the taste and its health benefits. And today, I'm going to show you the best way I know how to cold brew coffee from start to finish, both with and without raw honey. But you might ask, why cold brew when honey melts more quickly into hot coffee? I prefer cold brew because it's less acidic and less bitter than hot brew. And cold brew also has crude polysaccharides that help boost the health of the digestive system. But those are lost in hot brewing. Adding raw honey to hot coffee also causes it to lose some of its health benefits by heating it. So why raw honey and not refined sugar? Just like fats and salts, not all sugars are created equal. Some fats are better for us than others, like harmful artificial trans fats versus omega-3s. Or, when it comes to salts, sodium chloride versus mineral-rich Himalayan salt. Refined bleached sugar is one of the worst forms of sugar for our health, whereas natural whole fruit sugars and raw honey are the preferred fuel for our brains and muscles in moderation. Honey also provides antioxidants, boosts metabolism, reduces stomach ulcers, is a prebiotic, has antibacterial and antifungal properties, can soothe sore throats, and can significantly increase insulin levels to reduce hyperglycemia when used in moderation. Studies linked in the description below. Raw unfiltered organic honey is best. Raw and unfiltered to get the maximum health benefits, and organic to avoid pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides that can harm our health and the bees. Here's how to make it. First of all, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just showing you the products that I bought and used myself. I use these plastic lids here. You can also use the metal ones that come with the mason jars. You'll need some wide mouth 64 ounce or larger mason jars. You can use the one gallon ones with the spigot. Just make sure you adjust the amount of coffee accordingly. I use these stainless steel mesh filters. I actually got two of these. This is the higher quality one. The cheaper one will actually bend along the mesh there and it's not great for when you're actually filtering it, which I'll show you a little bit later. This higher quality one is only a few dollars more and I wish I had just gotten two of these. This is the coffee that I use. I get it from Costco, it's pretty affordable. It comes unground and then you take it to the front of the store and put it in their free grinding machine. Just make sure that you grind it coarsely because that way it'll filter through the mesh better. You can use a one third or a one fourth cup measure. I use a one third cup measure because it's just faster and I'm all about saving time. And I can fit it in there just fine. Just have to be a little bit careful. One. Two. Three. And that smells wonderful. Use high quality filtered water. I get mine from Costco because my local water here has quite high sulfur content, which makes coffee just not taste so great. We're going to go ahead and fill it up here. When I pour, I pour a little bit slowly, just first of all to make sure that it doesn't splash and to also make sure that everything is fully saturated. I'll also rotate it just to make sure there are no dry spots. And keep in mind that you don't want to fill it up to the very tippy top because no matter how tightly you close the lid, while it steeps, there's a danger that it might leak down the sides. Gonna want to leave about this much space on the top. Close the lid. And then give it a little shake horizontally. And then we put it off to the side to steep for 12 to 24 hours. Now for the filtering. I use these coffee filters here. The only reason they're brown is because they're unbleached. Alternatively, you can use something like this. This is a stainless steel French press that arrived just as I was filming this, so I haven't gotten a chance to use it yet. But when I do, I'll give it a full review. You could also use something like these disposable bag filters. I haven't tried them myself yet, but I intend to soon. They might be the fastest option. If you use them, then let me know how they work out for you in the comments below. Time to get another clean mason jar. And make sure that if you have a crappy dishwasher like I do, that you rinse it out so you don't have any soapy residue left behind. 
This is a finished steeped cold brew. As you can see, it's nice and dark. This is the silicon funnel that I use. Stick it in there. I use two filters layered together because so far a double layer has not broken for me. Stick it in there. We take out the filter, let the grounds fall to the bottom of the mesh filter. Let it drip out a little bit and then transfer it to the funnel. Lay it on its side in the center of the funnel. Adjust as needed. And pour over the mesh. I find that doing it this way causes it to filter fastest without having to replace the filters. We lay it on its side in the center so that it creates a pressure point in the middle, causing the fluid to drain faster. If you didn't use the mesh this way, then this sediment would go directly to the filter and it would drastically slow or stop the drip rate, and you'd probably have to replace the filter. You can see that the mesh is warped here because this is the cheaper one. With clean hands, gather the sides of the filter together without spilling anything. And we're going to squeeze out the remaining coffee without breaking through. Now we remove the funnel, and if you don't want to add honey, then at this point you're done. Just add a lid, stick it in the fridge, and drink within two weeks. And here's how to add honey to cold brew coffee. You can see that I removed about half of it because my roommate doesn't like it sweet. But this is how you do it. This is the honey that I'm currently using right now. It's a raw clover honey. I enjoy it a lot. Raw, organic, unfiltered honey isn't quite in the budget right now, but this is pretty good. Now for really sweet coffee for a full jar, I never use more than half a cup, but it's to your taste. I usually use maybe about one fourth of a cup for a full jar, but right now I'm gonna put it to maybe half of the first line. And I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Be enough for me. Put the lid back on. Give it a good shake. This is already pretty mixed here. If you, you can leave it on the counter and it will dissolve into the coffee more. And then when you go to get another drink, you just give it another little shake. And every time you do this, it'll dissolve more into the coffee. Sometimes all of it will dissolve the first time you shake it. But I'd say after, you know, you leave it on the counter for about an hour or two, go watch a show or a movie. After the first shake, give it another shake when you come back, put it in the fridge. But sometimes you just want to sweeten a single cup, and here's how you do that. Fill it up about halfway, and then before you add any milk, you're going to add the honey. How much you add is personal preference. Let's see here. That's good enough for me. And then you don't use a spoon to mix it. You actually use a fork. A fork is going to mix a lot better than a spoon will when it comes to honey and coffee. And 
And now you'll notice that there will still be honey on the fork. You can either continue mixing until it's fully dissolved, or what I like to do is just take the honey that's still on the fork and have it like a little treat. Mmm. Coffee honey. It's delicious. Spoonful of honey helps the coffee go down, the coffee go down. And then, as always with cold brew coffee, add the milk. And now you have honey sweetened cold brew coffee. Enjoy! Remember that the final product is concentrated coffee, so fill your cup halfway with the cold brew and the other half preferably with organic milk. Using raw organic milk provides the most health benefits, but that's not available in some areas. Why use milk? Coffee has oxalates that leach calcium from the body, increasing the risk of health problems like kidney stones. Heat reduces oxalate content, but since we're cold brewing, we use the calcium in milk to safely bind the oxalates. And considering how much coffee some people drink, cold brew every day without milk isn't something I recommend. I also think it tastes better with the milk. For even more caffeine and a stronger taste, fill your cup three-fourths of the way with cold brew and then one fourth with milk. And that's it. Enjoy your cold brew coffee. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry about the framing and autofocus issues. Filming this has been a real learning experience for me, and I intend to do better in the future. My next video was shot at the same time as this one, so it'll share some of the same problems, but I'm gonna save up for a GoPro so my future recipe and tutorial videos turn out better. If you're interested in helping me get better equipment, you can subscribe to my Subscribestar for as little as $1 a month, or click on one of the Amazon links and try some of the products. Or if you get anything that you normally would within 24 hours of clicking, it'll help me out a lot, and it'll never cost you extra. So thanks again, and stay tuned for my next video about the bulletproof breakfast I have almost every morning.